Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson on the gross anatomy and routine radiographic projections of the thoracic spine. This essential topic forms the foundation for accurate imaging and diagnosis of conditions related to the thoracic spine. In this lesson, we'll cover the anatomy of the thoracic spine and routine projections for radiographs. Let's get started. Anatomical terms related to the thoracic spine include vertebrae, bones of the spine, kyphotic, convex curvature of the thoracic spine, intervertebral joints, amphiarthrodial joints between vertebral bodies, zygopophyseal joints, joint between the articulating facets of adjacent vertebral bodies, costal joints, articulations of the ribs to the thoracic vertebrae, intervertebral foramina, opening between vertebrae where spinal nerves and blood vessels pass, intervertebral discs, tough fibrocartilaginous discs that separate typical adult vertebrae. Now let's apply these terms to identify the corresponding anatomy. You may recall that the vertebral column, also called the spine or spinal column, is a complex arrangement of many bones called vertebrae that lie in the mid-sagittal plane and provide a flexible supporting column for the trunk and head. It also transmits the weight of the trunk and upper body to the lower limbs. The spine forms the posterior or dorsal aspect of the bony trunk of the body. As discussed in other lessons, the vertebral column is divided into five sections, each with distinct vertebrae. The second section contains the 12 thoracic vertebrae, which will be the focus of this lesson. The other sections are discussed in other lessons. It is important to note that vertebrae are often labeled and referred to by the letter of the region, followed by the vertebrae number. For example, in the thoracic region, the individual vertebrae are referred to as T1 through T12. The spine is composed of a series of AP curves. For the purposes of this lesson, we will be describing the curb of the thoracic region as if we are evaluating the patient from the posterior perspective. From this view, the thoracic region has a convex or outward rounded curvature known as kyphotic. The curve of the thoracic region is known as the first primary curve because it forms soon after birth. The thoracic vertebrae are a mixture of typical and atypical vertebrae. T5 through T8 are considered typical vertebrae and consist of an anterior body, which is the thick, weight bearing portion where the intervertebral discs attach, and a posterior arch that forms the vertebral foramen. When these vertebrae are stacked, they form the vertebral canal, which houses the spinal cord. This image illustrates the various parts of the vertebral arch of a typical thoracic vertebrae. Pedicles form most of the sides of the vertebral arch. Each pedicle has a superior and inferior vertebral notch that, when stacked, join together to form the intervertebral foramina. Two somewhat flat layers of bone, called laminae, form the posterior part of the vertebral arch. Each lamina extends posteriorly from each pedicle to unite in the midline. Extending laterally from the junction of each pedicle and lamina is a projection termed the transverse process, and extending posteriorly from the junction of the two laminae is the spinous process. In this lateral view, we have a clear view of the anterior body and posterior spinous process, as well as the pedicles, laminae, and origin of the transverse processes. Additionally, in this view, we see the superimposed right and left superior and inferior articular processes. These processes form the zygopophyseal joints. The first four thoracic vertebrae are smaller than the middle vertebrae just discussed and share features of the cervical vertebrae, while the bottom four thoracic vertebrae are larger and share features of the lumbar vertebrae. A distinguishing feature of all 12 thoracic vertebrae is their facets for articulation with ribs. Each thoracic vertebrae is associated with one pair of ribs and has either a full facet or two demifacets on each side of the body that accept the head of a rib to form a costal vertebral joint. Vertebrae with demifacets share the rib articulation. For example, the superior portion of the head of the fifth rib articulates with the demifacet on the inferior margin of T4, and the inferior portion of the rib head articulates with the demifacet on the superior margin of T5. In addition to the costal vertebral joints, the first 10 thoracic vertebrae also have a facet on each transverse process that articulates with the tubercles of ribs 1 through 10. These articulations are termed costotransverse joints. The structure and angles of the zygopophyseal joints in the thoracic spine differ greatly from the other regions. In the thoracic spine, the zygopophyseal joints form an angle of 70 to 75 degrees from the mid-sagittal plane. 
To demonstrate these joints radiographically, the patient must be in a 70 to 75 degree oblique position. The openings of the intervertebral foramina of the thoracic vertebrae are located at right angles to the mid-sagittal plane. To demonstrate these clearly, the patient must be in a true lateral position. The routine radiographic projections of the thoracic spine are the AP and lateral. Remember, AP, or anteroposterior, means the beam enters the anterior portion and exits the posterior portion. This is preferred for images of the vertebral column to reduce object to image distance and size distortion by placing the vertebrae as close to the image receptor as possible. In summary, the thoracic spine is the second region of the vertebral column and consists of 12 vertebrae numbered T1 through T12. T1 through T4 are smaller atypical vertebrae that resemble the cervical vertebrae. T5 through T8 are considered typical vertebrae and T9 through T12 are larger and resemble the lumbar vertebrae. Routine radiographic projections of the thoracic spine include AP and lateral. In the next lesson, we will take a closer look at the radiographs to identify this anatomy.